In my family, I have myself and Neil, my 30-year-old daughter, Tian, my 25-year-old daughter, Taylor, my 11-year-old twins, Kai and Cooper, my 10-year-old twins, Zach and Fletcher, and my baby granddaughter, Ayla. Kai's a very curious little boy who likes to learn all different things about all different topics. He's a very loving little boy. He loves his family. My name is Kai, I'm in year five and I'm 11. My name is Cooper, I'm in year five and I'm 11. Daddy always plays soccer with me, but, uh, but he beats me, <laughs> usually. <laughs> yeah, that he's really competitive and I like competitive people. So sometimes he'll beat me, but then I'll, sometimes I'll beat him. So I like a challenge, so that's good about him. So, yeah. What I like doing at home is playing sport and video games and playing with my brother and beating him. <laughs> Kai has cerebral palsy. He has a dystonia. And it's only recently that we found out that Kai is affected by cerebral palsy in all four limbs. And Kai is in um, a lot of pain most days, um, which he um, does take nerve blockers for. Kai struggles to do um, fine motor, skills such as uh, riding for long periods of time, using a knife and fork, things that um, everyone else, um, we just take for granted, uh, Kai can struggle with. So we went into um, the emergency, they started monitoring Kai, they brought the paediatric registrar down. Um, the next thing we know, um, um, Kai sat, started dropping, they rushed him into um, ICU. We're still very unaware of um, what was going on at this point. So um, uh, they get him up into the ICU and the next thing we know Kai stops breathing. The lack of oxygen um, to the brain while Kai was not breathing is actually how Kai got cerebral palsy. Having both the boys there, I was able to um, watch Kai and Cooper and Cooper, Kai was doing things that Cooper wasn't. Every time Kai would concentrate on something, you could see his fingers and his toes curl and he wasn't hitting his milestones the way Cooper was hitting his milestones. So I mentioned it to um, his paediatrician and he's a paediatrician sort of fobbed me off a little bit. So me being me, I come home and I Googled the hell out of it um, and found what I thought it was. And um, the paediatrician actually, I think more than anything to keep me quiet, sent me over to um, a specialist named Dr. Stephen Knipe. And um, we met Stephen and he did some testing on Kai and he said, Danielle, tell me what you think is wrong with Kai. And I said, I think he has um, semi-hemiplegia, cerebral palsy. And he said to me, well, I'm going to tell you, you and good old Dr. Google are 100% correct. Without Cerebral Palsy Alliance, I don't know where um, our family would be, I guess, because they have just been there for us for whatever I needed. They've educated me. They've helped me um, educate my son, educate all my children. For Kai, because he is such a high functioning child with cerebral palsy, it's sometimes hard for him to see where he fits in because he's not in a chair, because he doesn't have what I guess people would think someone with cerebral palsy looks like. So for Kai to go to cerebral palsy and see children out there who are as high functioning with him as him um, makes him feel it's where he belongs. If someone was considering um, participating in the extra mile, I would say go for it. Every little bit helps. Um, we have um, children who have CP, need your help, you're an able-bodied person, why not? It's not much out of your day. And without the donations, the children won't get the funding, the equipment, the research that they need to make their lives a little bit better. Thanks for helping kids like me. Thank you for helping kids with cerebral palsy like my brother Kai.